Yeah, um, he was just so good. <laughs> he was really, he didn't, he'd never cried, never asked for anything, not that he could speak at that time, but he was just the most placid baby that you could actually, I could, I could bring him to work and stick him under the desk sort of thing. He would just be as happy as anything just looking around. And then every now and again he would become totally inconsolable. I mentioned it to friends and then I actually went to the GP and asked for a referral when he was just under 18 months. And the GP sort of brushed it off, but did refer him and referred him to a paediatrician. And so we had an appointment with a paediatrician who said he's just a perfectly normal little boy, he's just a bit delayed. And he just happened to about, probably three or four weeks later, had his 18 month checkup with the health visitor, which I was looking forward to, because it's always quite nice to have your babies pushed and prodded and you know get some sort of feedback about them. And she failed him on pretty much every task going and said, well, I'm sorry, but we have a problem. And then she also said, strongly suggested that we started to take part in a group called Interplay, which was in a different town, I think. And I remember that she said to me that I might feel a little bit uncomfortable about the people who were there, which was a terrible thing to say. Well, I still don't really understand why she said it. But anyway, we went to Interplay and there was a bunch of parents with these um, children who obviously had learning difficulties. They, none of us knew at the time, I don't think. Um, so we used to go to that every week, which is a bit sort of sad. I think we all sort of, nobody really knew what was what we were all doing there, mm. or what our kids were. And I think we were probably all looking at each other's kids, thinking, well, what's, what's happening? What does it mean being here? I thought it was, he maybe had something called Fragile X Syndrome. And so I asked the GP in Oxford to investigate it further. So he said, well, I will, but you can take the blood. I remember he sort of said, well, I'll do the blood test, but you'll have to walk it around to the JR. So I remember walking across the park with Connor in a pushchair and with this sample blood to hand into the JR. It was so bizarre. And then the GP rang back about three weeks later, about two days before Christmas, and said, oh, there's good news and bad news. It's not fragile X syndrome, it's the good news. And the bad news is it's something called Kleinfeld syndrome which again was an appalling telephone <laughs> conversation. And um, yeah, that wasn't a good Christmas. And then I think this, some professional got involved with us. I can't remember, she was, I can't remember who she was. She wasn't a health visitor. She was maybe a preschool teacher counsellor popped up on the doorstep because obviously they, the GP must have notified somebody. So she was reasonably helpful and she suggested we applied for disability living allowance. And that was the first time disability had cropped into my mind. And I remember being a bit bemused by that and thinking, oh, well, um, why, why would we do this? I didn't really, it's funny how I didn't really, the implications of any of this stuff didn't really sink in that easily. But anyway, I filled in the forms and um, we got a letter about three weeks later where they backdated it and we just got given this chunk of money. And I, I, I can remember opening that up and I can remember being in the hall still opening that envelope and thinking, oh, so he's disabled then, you know. That was a bit of a shock as well. Um, 